the Science, Space, and Technology Committee will come to order. Uh, welcome back. We will now reconvene the markup to consider the unfinished business notice for markup last Thursday. After reporting H.R. 2413, H.R. 2431, and H.R. 2981, the committee recessed for members to work out differences on the bill H.R. 3625. It is my understanding that we have come to a resolution on that language, and so we will now proceed with the markup of H.R. 3625. Pursuant to notice, I now call up H.R. 3625, introduced by Representative Brooks, providing for termination liability costs for certain National Aeronautics and Space Administration projects. The clerk will report the bill. H.R. 3625, to provide for termination liability costs for certain National Aeronautics. Without objection, the bill will be considered as read, and uh, the gentleman from Alabama, Mr. Brooks, is recognized uh, for an opening statement on the bill if he wishes to do so. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, for the opportunity to discuss H.R. 3625, which frees up funding for the Space Launch System, Orion Crew Capsule, and International Space Station, and prohibits cancellation of any of these programs without express congressional consent. H.R. 3625 helps accelerate progress on these vital space programs by allowing these programs to spend dollars that have already been appropriated on actual work rather than withholding these funds on the unlikely chance of program termination. According to NASA, as of October 2013, SLS, Orion, and space station contractors are withholding $507 million in appropriated funding to cover potential termination costs should the federal government cancel these programs without cause. H.R. 3625 frees up that $507 million for productive work. Withholding funds for termination liability has become a recent NASA practice that unfortunately risks driving up project costs by slowing down contract performance. This contract performance delay, in turn, makes it even more likely that a program will ultimately be terminated. I believe it unwise to subject America's Space Launch System, Orion Crew Capsule, and International Space Station to these types of risks, in a time of budget constraints, passing this bill is one way to help ensure that this important NASA work on SLS, Orion, and the International Space Station proceeds as needed. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and I yield back the balance of my time. Thank you, Mr. Brooks, and I understand Ms. Edwards is going to hold her comments for the manager's amendment. Uh, we will go to that now, and I'm going to offer the manager's amendment, and if the clerk will report it. Amendment 2, H.R. 3625, offered by Mr. Smith of Texas. Without objection, the manager's amendment will be considered as read, and I'll recognize myself to explain the amendment. The manager's amendment before us today is a product of bipartisan agreement. NASA should fund its programs in the most efficient manner possible to ensure the achievement of national priorities. At the suggestion of Ms. Edwards, this amendment adds the James Webb Space Telescope to the list of covered programs. At the suggestion of Mr. Grayson, this amendment also adds a definition for the term primary contract. As a result of negotiations between Mr. Brooks and Ms. Edwards, the amendment also clarifies the intent of Congress as to how NASA should manage these programs. This amendment, as well as the underlying bill, benefited from the additional time that members and staff dedicated to the task over the weekend. Uh, for these and other reasons, I support the passage of the bipartisan manager's amendment. Are there other members who wish to be heard? The gentlewoman from Maryland, Ms. Edwards, is recognized. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. I want to thank my colleagues, Mr. Brooks, for his graciousness in working with me to come to an agreement on the language of this amendment and to clarify uh, our intent. And I appreciate uh, the Chairman and Ranking Member Johnson for your leadership and um, for the, the staff and the members for their patience as we began to work out a bipartisan agreement over this last week. Um, I think that today's bill and the manager's amendment will help to ensure that NASA and its contractors can apply all of the funds that are designated and appropriated for the program, which the administration and the Congress have agreed are NASA's high priority projects. The International Space Station, Space Launch System, Orion, and the James Webb Space Telescope. Um, and to do that directly to perform the meaningful work that's intended on these projects. The manager's amendment will include the James Webb Space Telescope as a covered program since it's a NASA high priority program as well. And it makes clarifying revisions to the bill to avoid potential unintended consequences. 
there is nothing in the bill that really changes the circumstance for other NASA programs, and I want to make that clear. What the amendment does is it makes clear that a covered program be terminated, should a covered program be terminated for the convenience of the federal government, then the federal government is responsible for payment of all allowable and reasonable negotiated termination liability costs. The taxpayers deserve our efforts, especially in an environment of constrained budgets, to find ways to facilitate agency progress on these high-priority programs, and that is to apply all of the funding that we intend to these programs. At the same time, should a termination have to occur for the convenience of the government, then we're not going to rob other NASA programs, whether they're research, science, or any other NASA program, to pay for that convenience. Instead, the agency needs to come back to the Congress and have an appropriation designated to pay for those costs. That's our intent. Sometimes it's actually a good idea for us to take a little pause in our decision making to make sure that we've examined all of the angles before a final determination, and I think the manager's agreement does just that. In fact, bipartisanship, as we know, takes effort. It takes a willingness to compromise, and I'm really encouraged by the outcome of the collaborative discussions we've had over this last week between members and their staff, as well as between the majority and minority committee staff. I think this bill and the manager's amendment will aid both NASA and its partners in ensuring the maximum amount of progress in meeting the scheduled milestones of these projects and putting the money that we've designated as a Congress to getting them done. And so I want to thank the chairman and thank Mr. Brooks, and with that, I yield back. Thank you, Ms. Edwards, for those comments. And does the gentleman from Alabama wish to be recognized? Yes, sir, just for a moment. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, for this amendment. I would also like to thank my colleagues on the other side of the aisle, and in particular Representative Donna Edwards and Representative Alan Grayson, for their insight that is reflected in this amendment. I think it's very productive for us to add the James Webb Space Telescope to this protective status where it cannot be terminated for convenience of the government without the consent of the United States Congress. And I think that's appropriate given the importance that that program has to America's preeminence in space. With that, Mr. Chairman, I would ask that the members both support the Chairman's amendment and the bill on final passage. Thank you, Mr. Brooks. Are there other members who wish to be heard on the manager's amendment? If not, the vote occurs on the manager's amendment. All in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed say nay. Uh, the ayes have it, and the amendment is agreed to. If there are no further amendments and a reporting quorum being present, the question is on the bill. H.R. 3625 is amended. Those in favor say aye. aye. Opposed nay. The ayes have it, and the bill as amended is ordered reported favorably. With that objection, the motion to reconsider is laid on the table. And I move that the bill, H.R. 3625, as amended, be favorably reported to the House, and the staff be authorized to make any necessary technical and conforming changes. Without objection, so ordered. Uh, if there's no further discussion, that completes our business. I thank all the members for their presence today and congratulate them on uh, passing four bills in the last week. And that concludes our full committee markup, and we stand adjourned. Thank you, Thank you Donna. Gosh, I can't believe we postponed this and you didn't get to the ceremony. <laughs> <laughs>